Now this week we're going to explore text on a path inside Photoshop. And if you work with text in the past, you know that you simply just click the text tool, click inside the document, it'll set a text layer all as well. In this case, we're going to do very much the same thing, but this time apply it directly to a path, more specifically to a shape that we're going to create because we want to create kind of like a rounded logo with some text going around in the circle stuff. So let's begin by actually creating our shape. So I'm going to go over here in the toolbar, grab my ellipse tool from the shape menu. And I'm just going to hold down my shift key and draw out a circle. Holding down that shift key will constrain its proportions. Position that somewhat in the center there. Now let's go into the toolbar and grab our horizontal type tool. If you drag inside the document, you'll notice that the cursor just looks like a normal text cursor, but if you drag it over the path, it will change into a text on a path icon there, letting you know that you're about to start that text on this path, which is exactly what I want to do. So I'm going to click that top point, and it sets the uh, text point. I'm going to type the word extra here, and you can see it's set the text, not in the font or the type style I want. So let's go into our font menu. And I'm going to look for a font called Stencil. You know what? I'm just going to type it in because I don't feel like waiting for that menu. Since I know the font I want, I'm just going to type the name in, and it will go ahead and find it and apply it once I hit Enter. And all that looks good. So that text is set on the top area. Now I need to put some text on the bottom area, and I want it to say Extra Special in a rounded uh, sort of way. So I'm going to go ahead and create a duplicate of this text layer. And we'll take that text tool, highlight this copy, and we'll type the word special. So now it's overlapping. It's two separate layers, but they're overlapping each other. So here's what you're going to do. Grab that direct or that path selection tool, not the direct selection tool, but the path selection tool. When I drag over the text, you'll notice what happens to the cursor. It turns into a little double arrow right there. So when I click and drag, it will allow me to reposition that text on that path. And I'm just going to drag it right to the bottom here. Now, before I release, Going to do one more thing. Obviously, it's not. I don't, I don't want it to read upside down. I want it to read right side up. So if you simply drag inside the circle, it will position it, the text inside, just like that. Now, the only problem is it's overlapping that text. So let's grab that text tool once more, reselect that text, and we'll open up our text options here, our text panel, or the character panel, rather, and just go over here right to the space letter spacing and just increase that a little bit. I'm just going to use my scrubby slider and just push that out a little bit. Until that's a little bit more readable. And that looks good. So we'll go ahead and close this. Now, it's not quite positioned right because the word extra and the special, they're not lined up in the circle. That's just a matter of rescaling the shape. So I'm just going to press Command or Control T to invoke the free transform. And we'll just scale this uh, shape out. And I'm using this path as a guide along the top of this lettering to position that text. And there we have it. It's looking a little bit more rounded and like it's supposed to be. All right. So now let's go and create a border or a border shape around this. So I'm going to grab my my regular elliptical marquee tool. Again, holding down the shift key, I'm just going to drag out the shape right outside the edge of my document. And let's go ahead and create a new blank layer. That's why it wouldn't let me move it. And we'll position that right about here. On that blank layer, we're going to apply a stroke to this. Let's go into the Edit menu, go to Stroke. And let's give it a good size stroke here. Let's go with about 15 and see what that does. And I think that looks pretty good. And we'll just nudge these over a little bit. So we're almost there. Let's add a small graphic in the center here just to make it a little bit more interesting. I'm going to go into that shape, those shape tools once more and select Custom Shape Tool. And up here in the custom shape menu, we've got all these different shapes that we can apply. And I'm just going to grab this little florid shape right here, right in there in the center there. And we're going to add this to our graphic here. So I'm just going to drag it out. Now, let me undo that. Since I'm gonna, I know this, I'm just going to put this on this one layer, I'm going to go ahead and draw it as pixels and not a path or a shape layer. So select that pixels icon. And I'm just going to draw it out. It'll draw out the path, but when I release, it's going to go ahead and fill it with pixels and leave it rasterized. So all that's done and looks pretty good. So now what I want to do is merge all these together. Now, I'm not going to merge them all, all the originals together, just in case I need to come back and change the, the copy or something like that. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn off the visibility of that background layer. 
Hold down your Option key or your Alt key if you're on a Windows machine, go into the Flyout menu and choose Merge Visible. What it will do is take all of those layers, all those visible layers, and combine them into one, uh, one new layer. So if I turn all these off, there we still have our graphic and all looks good. Well, I'm going to throw a layer, a layer mask on this graphic, and you'll see it's a reveal all layer mask. And we're going to go into the filter menu and apply a filter directly to this layer mask. We're going to go into the texture menu and go down here to texturizer. And it's already set from when I used it before, but what you need to do is normally you just have the sandstone, burlap, all these. Go into the little flyout menu here and choose load texture. And inside your CS4 folder in the presets, you have a folder called textures. And we're going to locate the mountains texture right here. Go ahead and click load. And set the scaling to about 150 and the relief, well, I'll put that around 30. And I'm going to go and leave the lighting at top right. And let's go ahead and click OK. And you can see, because we applied it to the layer mask, it's applying that texture, giving it some transparency through that graphic. Well, it's a little too intense, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to press up, or go under the image menu, rather, and go to Adjustments and choose Levels. And notice we're still on the layer mask. We're not adjusting the layer, but the layer mask. And we're just going to adjust that brightness so it's a little less intense. So we'll lessen that effect a little bit more by bringing that in here. We'll push the white slider over a little bit. So we're just getting some subtle areas that it's showing through there. We'll click OK, and there we have it. So let's go ahead and fill this with a color now. So we'll get this bright red here. Select the layer now. Not the layer, uh, the layer mask, but rather the layer itself, and lock the transparency. And let's select that red color, and I'm just going to press Option Delete, and it will fill that graphic in with that color. So now let's apply this to a background. Here I have a file of simple cardboard background here. I'm going to take my logo and just drag and drop it into this working file. And we'll position it off to the side here. I'm going to press Command or Control T and just give it a little bit of a rotation. So it looks a little bit more realistic. And last thing I need to do is simply change the blend mode so it looks a little bit more real. Just go from normal to multiply. And there you can see it's showing the texture through and all looks like a real stamp. I can reposition it anywhere I want. And there you have it.